how would we create a relatively complex shape that is lofted up and it tapers to a thinner profile along that loft. Let's dive in. Let's show some good housekeeping how we do this. Folks, welcome to another Fusion Friday. What inspired this was a problem that a customer had with a file, and the file was a mess. So the first thing I wanna show is let's do a clean start. I wanna extract this profile and move it over to a new Fusion 360 file to do it the right way. P for project, I'm gonna project on the bottom plane. I'm gonna click that profile. If I turn my bodies off, you can see what we've done is we've created this sketch profile. That represents the shape I need to start over from scratch. Expand my sketches. That sketch four we just made, right click, save as DXF, put it right here, click OK. We're done with this file for now. We'll upload that file, that DXF. First thing we need to do, we just opened a new file, right click, check to make sure I want to capture design history. The default is not to, so change it to capture design history. That gives us our timeline, our traditional parametric modeling along the bottom. Right click, new component, tapered loft. Good news is we've got the sketch that represents the geometry that we want. The bad news is that it's blue, so it's not constrained, and I can't edit that sketch. That's okay, we're gonna fix we're gonna kill two birds with one stone here. I also want that geometry to be inside, that sketch to be inside this tapered loft component for good housekeeping. So I've activated that component, P for project. I'll pick my XY plane, and I'm going to project all of that sketch geometry. Click OK. So what have I done? We've basically got two sketches that are sort of the same. I've got this version zero up here, and I've got the sketch one here. The difference is that this one I can edit. I also don't want it to be purple. It, purple links it back to the imported sketch, but this is gonna become the base of our model. So drag a box around it, right click, break link. That breaks the projection link. So this is now blue, which is not good, because I can drag it around, drag another box around it, and now I can choose fix. I've now got, editable sketches, so I could apply dimensions and constraints and, and edit this as I need to, and it's no longer linked back to this top sketch, so I can right click and delete it. i stop this sketch first, I guess. Right click, delete, there we go, awesome. Construct offset plane. From here, I'll go up three inches, click OK. P for project, I wanna project this geometry onto this top, uh, new construction plane that we just made. So I'll click on it. What do I want to project? Again, just click our shapes, our lines and curves, contours, sketches, whatever you want to call it. Click OK. When you're looking at it straight down, it looks like they're the exact same, but as I orbit the model around, you can see what's happened is it's projected that geometry up here. Click OK. Modify, change parameters. See the green cross next to user parameters? Let's add one called taper, taper to size. Actually, we'll say taper size, a little easier. And we'll say 10 thou. Click OK, click OK. Let's edit our sketch two. I'm gonna turn off sketch one just so this doesn't get too confusing. Sketch offset. One, two, three, four. And I want that to be offset by the taper size. And I want to make sure that the red is outside of this because I want it to taper thinner. Click OK. Same thing. I can do keyboard shortcuts. S pops up offset. Click here. One, two, three, four. Get everything? Yep. And I'll say taper size. Click OK. So I've got the two black lines inside of the purple sketch geometry. The thing I don't like is the purple sketch geometry would allow me to select uh, the wrong face or, or area. If I click on X on just a, well, I can do it on all of them actually, to change that into construction line. That makes this a, a lot easier when it comes to using the model because now I either have the correct option 
or the wrong one. Much easier to handle. Stop sketch. Turn my bottom one back on. S loft. So now what I can do is loft from here up to here. Click OK. Now I don't understand why Fusion does this, but even though I only selected the outside profiles, it includes the center. There's a quick fix, which I don't like, but is to do another loft. Let's see here, turn those sketches back on. I'll loft, turn the body off. I'll loft from here to here as a cut, click OK. And that fixed it. Somebody tell me why that doesn't happen correctly from the get-go. So that's how we do a tapered loft. Pretty cool, if we measure the thickness, say from here to here, it's 0 0.042. But that same corner down here is 0 0.071. Super useful if you're doing things that require tapers, whether it's for mold making or for 3D printing. How do we get a curve into that? Let's rewind in our design history to here. Turn our sketches back on. S for our keep a shortcut, ARC, arc, three point arc. The arc needs to go on the plane uh, between the blue and the green, so that's the YZ. I'll now pick, the points need to be in the same uh, location, I believe. There we go. So I'll pick a point up here, like so. And I can make that vertical to that, which snaps it. There we go. And I'll define this radius as four inches. I've got a slight curve there, hit stop sketch. Now I can redo my first loft. I'm going to right click and edit. I'm going to add a guide rail center line. And then here, I don't think I have to even click the plus. I can just hover over, pick that line, boom, done. Drag our timeline next to fix the second one, which again, if somebody would fix me on the loft, maybe I don't even have to have the second one. And I'll pick that same, turn my sketch back on to see it. Center line, click OK. Done with that sketch. There we go. Tapered loft along a curve. Folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Go make awesome stuff. Take care. See you soon.